Welcome to FMSP Online Revision. This session is for OCR FP2 and the topic we're going to be looking at is numerical methods. So we'll take a look at the specification first. So candidates have got to be able to understand about staircase and cobweb diagrams. They've got to understand whether or not the convergence of an iteration will take place and know the conditions for that to happen. Uh, so it's probably worth just put, writing this in that uh, convergence will take place assuming that f dash of x is between negative 1 and positive 1. So that is the general condition for convergence. For a staircase diagram, uh, then it actually occurs when f dash of x is between 0 and 1 and a cobweb diagram will actually occur when f dash of x is between minus 1 and 0. So we'll just put that little bit of information in. Uh, then in part b we've got to use the facts that for iteration x to the n plus 1 equals f of x and n which converges to alpha then successive small errors e to the n are such that and we have two different situations first of all a linear approximation so e to the n plus 1 is approximately equal to f dash of alpha e to the n and that occurs if f dash of alpha is not equal to naught and secondly e to the n plus 1 is approximately proportional to e squared, e n squared, if f dash of alpha is equal to naught, and that's uh, a quadratic approximation. In part c, we've got to understand in geometrical terms the working of newton raphson and appreciate the conditions under which the method may fail to converge. And the one that is likely to be the problem most often is uh, turning points. So it does not converge at a turning point. So that is important. The other situation is perhaps if there is a discontinuity in the graph. So just be aware of that. And then in part D it says derive and use iterations based on the newton raphson method and understand that this method is an example of an iteration of the form x to the n plus 1 equals f of x to the n where f dash of alpha is equal to naught. So it actually has is a quadratic approximation. So we'll have a look at a couple of exam questions now. So this is a question about sort of the iterative method. So we're given a function f of x, 2 plus log x, and we're asked to use the iterative formula x to the n plus 1 equals f of x to the n, uh, and taking x1 to be 3.1, we've got to find the next two values. Just be careful there, it does say to give our answers correct to five decimal places. Then we've got a little bit of work in part two about errors. So we're given the value, the true value of alpha, and we've got to use that and the, our answers to part one to make an estimate for f dash of alpha correct to three decimal places. And then of course, because we know our function and we actually can differentiate it, we're asked to state the true value f dash of alpha correct to four decimal places. And then the third part, we've got to illustrate the iteration by drawing a sketch and state whether the convergence is staircase or cobweb. So three parts of the question. So let's have a look at the first two parts. Uh, now it is sort of numerical work here. So we should be able to do this reasonably quickly. So we've got a value of x1 we've got to work out the next value, which will be just 2 plus the log of 3.1, giving our answer to three decimal places, so it's 3.13140. And then x3 will be 2 plus the log of the value we've just found, so 3.13140. 
and that is equal to 3.14148. And there's one mark for each of those values. Then in part two, the result that we need is that f dash of alpha is approximately equal to E3 over E2. And we're given the formula for finding E3 and E2, so it's alpha minus our value of either X2 or X3. And if we substitute those in, we'll get 0 0.00471 for alpha minus x3 and then alpha minus x2 will be 0 0.01479 if we divide that out we get 0 0.31846 we're only asked for three decimal places so 0 0.318 and then it says to state the true value so state means we should literally be able to write it down and of course we know that the derivative of log x is 1 over x so f dash of alpha will be 1 over alpha and we're given alpha to be 3.14619 so if we do that division we'll get 0 0.317 Eight, four. And again, in this case, we're asked to give it to four decimal places, so that will be 0 0.3178. So it is important that you give things to the right degree of accuracy as you're asked. So we got, in terms of the three marks for that question, there was a method mark for knowing that we had to work out E3 over E2, and an accuracy mark for getting the answer, and then there was just one mark for stating the true value of f dash of alpha. So we'll look at part three now. Now part three is where we have got to draw a diagram. So I have started to draw this diagram. So I've got the line y equals x. So remember that is the line that we need, y equals x. And then this is my function f of x, or a little bit of it. And this is the root, so this will be alpha, the true value of our root. So we took our first approximation to be 3.1. So what we have to do is we have to show this on our diagram. So we're going to draw a line from 3.1 up to our graph and then across to the line y equals x and then up to the graph and across to the line and up to the graph and across to the line. So that is the sort of diagram that you need to be able to draw and hopefully you'll recognize that as a staircase diagram. So we have now provided an illustration in terms of three marks, there's one mark for drawing the line y equals x and the curve y equals f of x. Uh, there's a mark for showing how the approximation curves and you do need to have at least two of these uh, approximations shown. And then there's a mark for recognizing it as a staircase diagram. So three marks. So let's have a look at another question. This one now is on newton raphson So we've got an equation. Uh, successive approximations are denoted by x1, x2 and so on. We've got to show the newton raphson formula can be written in this form. f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3 over 3x squared minus 5. We've then got to find f dash of x, so a bit of differentiation and verify that f dash of alpha is equal to naught. So remember that was the condition for quadratic approximation. And having verified that, we've got to use the newton raphson method to find the root which is close to 2. And writing down sufficient approximations to find the root correct four decimal places. So let's have a little look then at this. 
Now the first part is fairly straightforward, so I and there's a lot of sort of uh, just sort of fairly straightforward algebra in there, so I have written that out. So the important thing is that we have our function f of x equals x cubed minus 5x plus 3. So I've differentiated it to find f dash of x, 3x squared minus 5. This is the newton raphson formula, which actually is in your formula book if you don't remember it. So x to the n plus 1 equals x to the n minus the function f of x divided by the derivative f dash of x. So I've substituted in using the values that we have over here for the function and its derivative. I've then taken a common denominator of x 3x squared minus 5. So that means that we then end up with 3x cubed minus 5x to the n here. Minus, and just be careful, that you've got a minus sign here, so I've changed this to a plus and this to a minus. And then of course it all simplifies because if you look at that, you've got a 3x cubed there and a minus x cubed will give us 2x cubed. These will cancel out. So we've got 2x cubed minus 3 over 3x squared minus 5. So hopefully that, that will be all right. There were three marks for that question. So you get two marks for using um, the newton raphson method, a method mark for making a reasonable attempt and an accuracy mark for a correct attempt. And then you get another accuracy mark if you get it fully correct. And we'll now look at part two. So in part two, as I say, we've got to differentiate because we've got to find f dash of x. So remember, f of x was equal to 2x cubed minus 3 over 3x squared minus 5. So I'm just going to use the quotient rule to differentiate that. So f dash of x will be... 3x squared minus 5, so that's v, times the derivative of 2x cubed minus 3, which is 6x squared, minus u, 2x cubed minus 3, times dv by dx, which is 6x. And that is all over v squared, which of course is 3x squared minus 5 all squared. So we just need to simplify that and we'll get 18x to the 4th minus 12x to the 4th minus 30x squared plus 18x. Again, that's all over 3x squared minus 5 all squared. And if we simplify that now, that gives us 6x to the 4th minus 30x squared plus 18x over 3x squared minus 5 all squared. So hopefully the algebra is all right there. But of course there is a common factor in the numerator. So if we take that out, what you should then see is we end up with x cubed minus 5x plus 3 in the numerator, denominator isn't changing. Now the important thing is that f dash of alpha then, which is what we're trying to show that f dash of alpha is equal to naught. So f dash of alpha would be equal to 6 alpha over alpha cubed minus 5 alpha plus 3 all over 3 alpha minus 5 all squared. But of course, alpha cubed minus 5 alpha plus 3 was equal to naught because this was given at the beginning of the question. So in fact, this is equal to naught since 
alpha cubed minus 5 alpha plus 3 equals naught. And that, as I say, was given in part 1. So three marks for that question. Uh, you get one mark for using the quotient rule, one mark here, a method mark, for getting it in this sort of form, so you've taken out a common factor of 6x, and then one mark for explaining that f dash of alpha must be equal to 0 since this term is equal to 0, so the numerator will be 0, and so on. And then part three is the actually using the newton raphson So remember, this is something that you can do with your calculator. So you probably want to use the answer button on your calculator. But the formula that we had was x to the n plus 1 equals 2xn cubed minus 3 over 3x squared minus 5. So if you're putting that into a calculator, just be careful that you do put the brackets around it so you are putting it in correctly. And we're asked to take a starting value of 2. So that means that you would put 2 into your answer memory and then use this formula. Everywhere we've got an x to the n, you're going to replace it by the answer. And then we need just to make sure that when we do this answer, these answers, and again, if you've got your calculator set up, it's a fairly quick thing to do, then we've got to give our answer to four decimal places, so we must have at least five when we're working here. And what we're doing is we're going to keep going until we get to a stage where we can be sure our answer is accurate to four decimal places. So, so far that's not doing very well because this would mean that our fourth place was a five and here it would be a four, so we'll need to do one more at least. And when we do the next one, what happens is we end up with the same answer. So now we can be sure that our root is definitely 1.8342 to four decimal places. And the only thing you've really got to be careful there is that you aren't too sort of lazy about writing it out. As I say, you do have to show these answers to five decimal places. So we get one mark for the first approximation and then we get another mark here when we see that we've got two of this which will round to the same answer and then we get one mark for the correct answer. So three marks in total. So I'm going to end the session here and just sort of say as I always do at the end of these sessions uh, remember that the best way to revise your maths is to do some more questions. So do try and work through as many questions as you can.